This episode of the podcast is sponsored by I Love Growing Marijuana. Now that you're ready to grow your own cannabis, they have everything you need over there from seed to nutrients. They even have a complete grower's guide that you can download for free. So click on the link in the show notes to get to their website and to take a look at their seed bank. Now don't forget, Delta Leaf Labs has the plant DNA sex testing kit that you need. They make it real simple to take a sample from your seedling. And then you send that sample off to the lab and a couple of days after they get it, you'll know exactly whether you've got a male or a female plant. So go over to deltaleaflabs.com, order your testing kits, and at checkout, use promo code IMGS10 for 10% off of that order. Whew, all right. Now let's start the show. Well, everyone, welcome back to the In My Grow Show, the podcast dedicated to taking the mystery out of cannabis. I'm your host, Alex, and I want to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to listen to me talk. Now it's a week before Thanksgiving. We're not doing a turkey this year since we're not going anywhere, and it's just my wife, my daughter, and myself. We're going to make ribs for Thanksgiving. Mmm. Going to barbecue some ribs. Yeah, because it's still barbecue weather out here in California. In the daytime, anyways. At night, it gets kind of cold. I mean, you know, cold for Southern California. It's not like Philadelphia or anything. But yeah, we're going to make some ribs. uh, Maybe a couple casseroles, like a green bean casserole to go with it. Of course, you got to have a little tradition in there. So yeah, we're going to have barbecued ribs for Thanksgiving. Now, let's get to the strain of the week. And this week, I'm going to give it up to some homegrown that a buddy of mine gave me. A strain called the Cool One. Now, I really like this strain, not just because I made it. And I did it by crossing a third dimension with a hit it once. Now, the reason I crossed them was because both of them are really easy to grow. Especially during the hot summer days up here in Ojai. Because it grows without showing too much heat stress during the hot summer months. Which I really liked. And I don't have to baby it so much. I haven't grown this in a while and I forgot how good this strain was, but my buddy, he did a great job at growing it, man. The cool one has this fruity taste and smell to it that it picked up from the third dimension. And just this uplifting, energizing high that lasts a really long time for me. Good job on my buddy Ben for growing the hell out of it, too. All right, so I want to move on and talk about my little veg cabinet that I've got set up. I opened the door to it the other day and I've got these LED red and blue light bulbs screwed into some of these lights, you know, these, uh, what do they call them? These mogul light sockets, the little hanging light sockets. Opened the door to the cabinet and one of them was just blinking on and off. Boop, boop, boop. So I knew, well, there went that light bulb, got to get a new one. So I ordered a new one off of Amazon, and I like those light bulbs because they're really good for small spaces. They don't put out a lot of heat, so they're perfect for what I need them for. And I was kind of surprised because that's the first one that's ever gone out on me. And I've had those light bulbs for a long time, too. But there you go. That's how you know those light bulbs go bad. They'll start to blink on and off. So now it's time for me to do the report from the Cannabis Frontline. And I got this information off of the normal website. That is normal.org. Go over there, stay informed of what's going on around the country in cannabis, and then become a member. They can always use your help. Now, U.S. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell issued a guarantee that hemp legalization will be in the finalized farm bill. In quotes, if there's a farm bill, it will be in there. I guarantee that, he told reporters. Wow, so if that's true, that means it'll be legal to grow hemp in all 50 states. That's a big deal. But like I was told once about listening to politicians, watch what they do, not what they say. Next, in Texas, House Bill 63 has been pre-filed by Joe Moody that seeks to replace current criminal sanctions 
for marijuana possession with a civil penalty, punishable by a fine only with no jail or criminal record. That'd be cool, right? No criminal record? Just a fine, that's it. It doesn't go on your permanent record. You're, <laughs> you're good. It won't affect your work or your school. Also in Texas, Senate Bill 90 has been pre-filed by Senator Jose Menendez that seeks to expand the Texas Compassionate Use Program and make it more inclusive and compassionate for patients. Next, in Massachusetts, recreational marijuana sales could begin on Sunday. The state's top regulators said sales will likely start in a week, plus or minus maybe a couple of days longer than that. So what are they saying? The weekend after Thanksgiving, marijuana sales are going to be legal in Massachusetts? Well, that'll be cool. And finally, in Vermont, Marijuana Legalization Study Committee's Taxation and Regulation Subcommittee plan to recommend a 26 or 27% tax rate on sales. Wow, Vermont, that seems high. 27% sales, is that right? 27% sales tax on marijuana products? So if I buy $100 worth of marijuana products, it's going to cost me $27 in taxes to walk out of there? Ooh. There's got to be an easier way, guys. Uh, that kind of tax rate just seems like you're trying to keep the black market alive. Like I said, I got that information off of the normal website. Next, I want to keep talking about something that I had mentioned on the last episode, and that is the probability that Mexico is moving towards legalizing cannabis. Okay, so this article shows up on NPR, and it's written by Terry Khan. And it's titled, Mexico looks to be the next to legalize marijuana. And it's talking about how, I think in December, Mexico gets a new government. And one of the senators that has been elected is this lady called Olga Sanchez Cordero. And she's really pushing this idea of legalizing marijuana for personal use, for people to grow up to 20 plants, and to also legalize a commercial cannabis industry so that Mexico can start benefiting from the worldwide cannabis market that just seems to be going legal everywhere. Yeah, so that's a really interesting thing because, you know, like I said, where does that leave America's cannabis policy, drug policy? I think we're missing the boat, everybody. We need to have a serious conversation about this. You know, putting aside all the, the, the scare tactics and all the, the scary language that people try to throw into it. It's definitely an interesting time for the cannabis industry. And I'll put the link for that article in the show notes also. Later on, I'm going to play a conversation that I had over the phone with Kristen and Felipe about the Bud and Brew Cannabis Networking event. They're the two people that put it on. So I'm going to talk to them for a little bit, but first... I want to talk about CBG and CBG is one of the cannabinoids that are in cannabis but that's been getting more and more attention in the media so I just want to talk a little bit about it and CBG is short for cannabigerol I believe that's how you pronounce it now before I jump into describing what CBD does let's get let's get a little background on some science First, we need to understand what biosynthesis is, and that is the combination of chemical compounds to form new chemical compounds. And when we're talking about the cannabis plant, the important chemicals to remember are, and let me see if I can get this straight, the first one is granulyl pyrophosphate, GPP, or sometimes GDP. The other one is olivetolic acid, otherwise known as OLA. Now, these two chemicals are the building blocks of 113 known cannabinoids. Now, when you combine these two elements together to a certain amount, they're going to make the cannabigerol, or the CBG. Now, CBG is one of those non-intoxicating cannabinoids that we always hear about, the, much like CBD. And it's mostly found in strains that are low in THC, but high in CBD. And that includes hemp. Now, it's really important to remember, I'm going to get back to that hemp part here in a bit. Now, CBG is considered to be a minor cannabinoid, and that's because it's found in ratios of like less than 1% in drug strains of cannabis. 
that are high in THC. If the cannabis is high in CBD, the CBG will be a little higher. The really interesting thing that I found about CBG is that CBG is the, the mother cannabinoid to both THC and CBD, along with like three or four other cannabinoids. But CBG is broken down by certain plant enzymes to either make THC or CBD. And that's why we find it in such low levels in the drug strains of cannabis. Because as the plant matures, the ultraviolet light, the heat, they turn on these enzymes that, like I said, convert the CBG to THC, CBD, or a few other cannabinoids. Now here's the real crazy thing I found out about hemp. Turns out that industrial hemp will carry something like 94% CBG. And scientists think the reason for this is because there's a recessive gene in hemp that since it isn't turned on to make THC, the hemp will just produce and hang on to more of that CBG. Now that's really interesting also considering what I just read a little while ago about the farm bill, about hemp about to be legal in all 50 states. So maybe we can start growing all that hemp and pull out the CBG from it. So by now you're probably wondering, what good is the CBG for? Maha. Well, they're finding out that CBG is really good for inflammation. And they're having a lot of positive results with using CBG for glaucoma, since there are a lot of CB1 receptors in the eyes. It's turning out to be a really good treatment for that kind of condition. Other inflammatory conditions that they've been testing it on is like uh, inflammatory bowel disease and Huntington's disease. Now you have to remember when I say they've been researching this, I mean they've been researching it on animals. Rats, mice, dogs, giraffes. No, I, I'm kidding about the giraffes. I don't know if that's true. They've also been testing it on certain types of cancer, like uh, colorectal cancer. And they've also found it to be a really good antibacterial agent. Apparently it works really good against MRSA, which is a drug-resistant form of streptococcal. And I'll put the full notes on this at the website inmygrow.com for this episode. So go over there if you're interested to look at any of the studies. They'll be highlighted throughout the text. Now, when I was doing my research on the internet, I used a few articles to put this information together. And I'll put the links at the bottom of the CBG segment. But in more than one of these articles, it talks about Subcool the breeder, who's a cannabis breeder. And when they talk about him, it seems like they're saying that he's actively working on strains specifically for CBG. So I decided to reach out to Subcool to see how that research was going. And he got back to me and this is basically what he said. He said he's not actively working on CBG strains, but the CBG is showing up in the work that he's doing. It's a happy accident, basically. But like I said, he's not actively working on CBG strains. There is one strain out there that was made by a Dutch company named Bedrocon BV Medical Cannabis, and that is the Bediol strain. So if you're looking for a high CBG strain, maybe you can find that, and that is spelled B-E-D-I-O-L. Like I said, I'll put this information up on the show notes at the website. Well, everyone, I'm gonna take a short break because I'm getting cotton mouth and I'm running out of spit. So I'm gonna put some music on, and when I come back, I'm gonna have that conversation with Kristen and Felipe. So hang tight. As promised, I finally got Kristen from SBVerde.com and Felipe from Delta Leaf Labs on the phone with me. Kristen, welcome back. Hi, thank you. And Felipe, just welcome because you've never been on the show. I'm really glad you're on. Hey, it's my first time. I haven't said that in a long time. Uh, hey, what hey, I hey, oh, 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 wow. I feel, now, I'm all, now I'm all tingly, man. All right. <laughs> okay. 
you know, I've never been on a podcast before, so my first time. So it's a pleasure to, to join them with such uh, great people. Welcome. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm glad both of you were on. I'm glad we could finally do this because we all have busy lives. Yeah, we were trying for a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I want to talk about this event you guys put together. It was, yeah, Bud Brew. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's called mm -hmm. Bud Brew. Where where was it at? It was, uh, what was the name of that brewery? The Third Window Brewery in the Funk Zone. In the Funks? Okay, so do you guys know why they call it the Funk Zone? No, educate me. No, I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, okay. I was hoping to be educated. I was hoping to learn something. Christian, Christian, Christian I think it's is just like a little now. bit funky down there. Oh, okay. okay, so but where does no. it start from, though? Where does the funk zone start? Because I thought it was like on the other side of the freeway. Yeah, and so you know what? I was actually calling our event funk zone adjacent because <laughs> I think that's more appropriate. I don't think it was necessarily in the funk zone, but it wasn't too far off of it. I think it was you could what? describe it back <laughs> right next to it. <laughs> No, but it was it was a great place. The third window. It was. Um, they were so nice. Uh, yeah, I, people. I'd never been there before. It was yeah, it was a pretty nice place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they were very good from the get go. Um, you know, we worked with um, Gerilyn, um, who is the manager at Third Window, and um, you know, it they were, they just came through just in in being able to accommodate. At first, we thought, you know, we, we, we would have about 50 people. You know, that, that was kind of like the goal. Um, and, and we just kept surpassing that, you know, each day after registration. So um, they kept giving us more and more spaces needed, and they just really came through. Um, if you haven't been to Third Window, it's in downtown Santa Barbara, Funk Zone adjacent, um, amazing place. They'll teach you right, craft beers. Um, it's and, at the uh, mill, which is, which is a really awesome place with different businesses that's fairly new, I think two years, a year and a half old. Mm -hmm. And I consider it the funk zone. I, I didn't know if it was funk zone proper, but I mean, that it wasn't as nice as State Street. That's why I, I always thought it was called the funk zone, but it's actually becoming kind of more hip than State Street at this point, but mm -hmm. it's a cool area. No, it was it was a really nice place and it was really easy to find too. How long did it take you guys to put this event together? Um, A little under six weeks. Um, and, but even the six weeks, like you have to kind of gauge exactly what happened, um, through social media, Kristen and I connected, um, and we decided, you know, let's, 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 let's hang out. Let's do happy hour somewhere and just talk about our companies and, and maybe ways that we can, um, you know, collaborate. We met at third window and we just had such a great time connecting about our, our individual experiences in, um, cannabis, um, and, um, you know, one thing led to another great energy, we just bouncing off the most terrific ideas. And that night we decided, you know what, we want to put together an event for the uh, local cannabis industry, right? Um, there's a lot of new people um, who just don't necessarily know each other yet. Um, and a lot of people who are also just trying to get into the industry. So we thought, let's build something and see see where it goes and um but yeah so if you count six weeks it's, it's like we met <laughs> we met that one day and six <laughs> weeks later like the event it wasn't like Kristen and I had a history or anything um before that we just really hit it off and we wanted yeah. to to um yeah try to make a difference try to connect people and try to yeah build community and I think that's what uh we were able to do it, was, it went really well what did you think Kristen? Yeah, I mean, um, when we talked, first of all, we hit it off, and uh, anyone who's ever planned an event with someone knows that you can't do it with someone that you don't really get along with, <laughs> and it was a big leap of faith, but we got along so well, I was excited to partner with Delta Leaf Labs and Felipe and work on the event, and throughout the process, he was really fun to work with, and we were both looking for networking events, because um, we're both, you know in new businesses and in the cannabis industry. And we weren't seeing those opportunities for ourselves. And I think in creating this event together, what we got to do was create the networking event that we would want to go to ourselves that would value diversity um, and value community. Um, so that was a really neat aspect of getting to uh, put the event on was that to create something that had our values in it. I mean, it was great because it was, it was, you know, provide, being able to provide this space for people within the industry to connect, you know, local people. Um, and so 
while there were some people who were familiar to others, uh, there was a lot of first time people meeting, you know, for the first time. And so that's exciting. Being able to provide that space, I think, is something that we want to do more of. Um, and Chris and I have been talking about how to follow that up. And so we have some ideas that we'll, that we'll share um, with you and um, your listeners uh, later on. Look, even though it only took six weeks, it was a really, really fun time. I mean, I was surprised what you guys pulled together in that amount of time. In my mind, it seemed longer. And I was like, really? It only mm-hmm. took six weeks? Mm-hmm. And so we hustled a lot during those six weeks. <laughs> no, and it showed, and it showed, man, and it totally showed. You had sponsorships there. You guys had a raffle. How? Yeah. How, how difficult was it to find sponsorship for it? Right. You know, so it was a little difficult at first because, you know, Chris and I aren't necessarily, you know, business partners or anything. We're just kind of people in the community who who wanted to just, you know, get together and throw this idea out. So um, I can understand, you know, how some people would have a reservation. Who are these people? And, you know, why are they asking and our companies for money? We've never thrown an event together before, so we didn't really have numbers. We weren't known quantities. You know, people didn't know if they could really rely on us to come through with a good event. So it was but a little bit of a hustle. Had you guys ever planned events separately? Yeah, yeah. So I used to work at a nonprofit um, doing HIV AIDS prevention um, for populations that were high risk. And so, um, yeah, we did, you know, all kinds of memorials, fundraisers, workshops, um, teachings, um, you know, just a lot of a lot of things that were kind of what we want to do here in this space, which is community build, um, empower the community, um, create cohesion and find ways to support um, local business, yeah, and, 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 and build community by addressing certain, certain causes that, you know, are also a part of this space, you know, social injustice um, and, and discrimination and, um, yeah, criminalization as well. So, but yeah, there's a lot of parallels. So I had fun doing it. What did you, did you have prior experience with putting events, Kristen? Yeah, I didn't really even consider it, but it's part of my day job for the last 11 years. We put on um, events in education and um, a lot of mm-hmm. professional development. And I didn't really realize it until we were in the middle of planning this event, and I was like, actually, I do have experience doing this. Well, because my official title is an event planner. It's just one of the, my duties with other things, so I didn't really feel like an event planner official, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I I definitely have experience in my other job um, helping to put on events. Well, that um, yeah, that helped both of you, man, because it uh, like I said, it really showed. So yeah, now, that's where we complimented. Yeah. complimented but I think the yeah. key was how well we got along because you can yeah. have two people with experience planning events, and it's definitely tricky to you know partner with someone. Um, work out, iron out the details and all that sort of thing. As anyone who's ever planned a wedding knows, I mean, you end up, you know, with a man of your dreams until you plan the wedding with them. No way. I stepped mm-hmm. back for that, man. I was like, all right. Yeah, I yeah, think I do it. I think I do it. You go ahead. You just show me the list and the pictures and, uh, yeah. yeah. No, uh-uh. See, yeah. That, that, that's a good strategy. Hey, yeah, yeah. That, I know my limits. So I, I want to ask you, like, what did you get out of the event, if anything, um, you know, because you, you live here on the Central Coast. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so I met a couple of people that I wanted to meet. I met a, what, Joe Garcia. I really wanted to talk to him because we're Instagram. Like, we know each other on Instagram, but that's about it. Everyone in the space knows when Joe. He's, he's, a, he's a, but that's the thing. He's a great leader, too. He's in the space. Yeah. Uh, but he's, I, uh, he's, more, he's just more of a, I don't know, I see him more as a community organizer, like, He's just a he's just a great guy, really involved uh, politically and just in, in the cannabis yeah. space and great guy. So yeah, you got to meet him. Who else? Got to meet Joe. Uh, met a couple of people I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Ran into a lady who runs a testing lab, which I'm more than likely going to get her on in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Because oh, yeah, uh, yeah, more like you know THC testing lab. Uh, yeah. And Give saw people. Out. You know, oh, her name is Shuli. But, oh, I, yeah. don't, uh, but I don't. But I don't remember. I don't remember what her lab. Kristen, was it True Labs? 
True Science. It was something True like that. Has, um, True, True Science Labs dot com, I think, is her her site. Yeah, I met Julie, and I'm you know I'm excited to get her on the on here. And I also ran into this young guy named Noah who's putting together a company called Bud Buddy. And I also saw you know my buddy Dr. Jake Felice. I had a great time talking to him always. Felice, that's how you pronounce it. Okay. Yeah, I think he's Italian. I don't really know, but yeah, that's how he pronounces it. It's Felice. So just to be clear, oh. there was there was no cannabis consumption on the premises. No. And no. Nope. Which you know like you know. I'm glad I took some edibles beforehand, but I planned ahead. So <laughs> now is that because it was a brewery and there was alcohol? Or they don't that... have a license for cannabis consumption. Actually, no one, um, I mean, we don't have smoking lounges in Santa Barbara. Lombok, actually, they they have a license. Someone has a license up there for a smoking lounge. But at this point, the city has not licensed any establishments to be like smoking lounges or, you know, places for consumption. Well, I'm wondering if a private event, well, maybe not, I guess not. Huh? If you can get away with it on a private event, like, I don't know. I think it's similar to alcohol. I mean, I'm not, you know, the mm. guru on this, but I mean, if you're not licensed to have alcohol, I think even if it's a private event, um, I don't know. I think it's licensing and also that at the mill, they have neighbors, you know, neighboring businesses. And so that was also a factor with that location is that, you know, they're not licensed for it. And also they have neighbors that, you know, they don't want smoke wafting around and that sort of thing. But we got a lot of feedback that people would love to see an event with consumption. And Mm -hmm. and I've been talking about that and kind of thinking about ideas of how to make that happen. But, But, yeah, this event was no consumption, but we did get feedback that people Mm -hmm. were like, to have a consumption area of future events. I know who to ask about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be great to find but out. Anyway. And, you know, if other people feel like, you know, that's something that's important to them, definitely call, you know, definitely call your yeah. elected officials, call the city, the yeah. county, fi- find out, you know. Oh, absolutely. Show, what, show up to city know. council meeting, get, man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Got to show up to city council meeting. Yeah, get involved. You know, that's, people, uh, you want these kind of spaces for you, for your loved ones. Um, you know, so that you're not confined to, you know, your 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 home. Yeah, well, I mean, that that's how we got wreck in Ojai, man, was showing up to city council meeting. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, it starts with a movement. It starts with a little movement. But, yeah. yeah, just it's always important to get involved in, and know that even the recreational and medical are, you know, the law of the land. Like, it's important always to just know that it the issue isn't over with. Um, there's still a lot of fights, um, you know, that are coming up. And, uh, yeah, it's just... Get involved, people. Stay involved and stay informed. How many people actually showed up? It was a lot more than what you originally thought were going <laughs> to yeah. sign up, right? Right. So, again, we, Christian and I were thinking, um, I answered first. I said 50 when <laughs> when uh, Third Window asked us. And she looked at me like, really? Like, you think we're going to get that many? And I was really... Oh, you thought that was high. For, like, she thought that I was thought, high. I was like... Like, well, that's ambitious because you know <laughs> the timeline and you know. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, right on. Go ahead, keep going. Yeah, yeah, and so um, you know the number quickly jumped, um, surpassing that. But I was thinking about seventy-five. Um, so we ended up getting about a hundred and fifty something registrations, and we had about a hundred and five people actually show up. Really. Um, so it was, yeah, it was a good event. It was a three hour, three hour window. It didn't look like a hundred um, people. Yeah, no, well, not, it wasn't during, all at the same the time. time. It wasn't all at the same time. Some people all showed right. up at the end. Some people showed up at the beginning, but, um, but yeah, so it wasn't all at one particular time. And, you know, in future events, we'll definitely tell people when the main part of the program is, if there's a program or yeah, people are together more when we have things like that. But yeah. But 105 people showed up, um, Wow, that's pretty and awesome. So, uh, it, hey, we were we were happy. We were very happy. Yeah. I mean, so look, because something like this hadn't really been done before, you know, um, in Santa Barbara, as far as we knew. Right. And so we just thought, you know, let's let's try it out. Let's try it out. Let's see where it goes. Um, and it was too successful. I mean, we ran out of of tickets just based on uh, pure capacity of the space, and so um, we had to start promoting it. Stop, stop promoting it about a week before the event. And so, uh, yeah, there was a lot of people on wait lists and people would contact me, contacting us via Instagram and email if 
if they could be squeezed in. Um, unfortunately, we didn't want to like issue more <laughs> more tickets than we had capacity for, just because it was the first time we were working with their right. Yeah, we wanted sure. to make sure that nothing got nothing got too chaotic for them. Um, again, they were just yeah, they were just uh, incredible to us. So what what did the owners of Third Window think of the event? You know, I talked they to them that happy. night. Yeah, they were happy. Yeah, they were they 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 liked it. Um, it was a good crowd, um, very organized, and yeah, it was it was a nice surprise for them. It was busier than a typical Wednesday. The same thing for the restaurant. I got that kind of feedback, but um, but that it wasn't too difficult to run, and you know, they treated us so well we got some deals on the food as well um that we we, we were able to get using uh some sponsor money oh we did have a couple of sponsors and i do want to mention them before um before, yeah let's uh, hear it, man. i forget it yeah so you know um uh the first um you know commitment that we got was from green goddess insurance chris do you want to tell me about them Sure. Um, it's a local insurance agent in Santa Barbara, and she has a very well-established um, insurance business, but she's starting um, a new company that's strictly focused on insurance for cannabis-based um, businesses. And she already has clients through her mainstream um, insurance company, and it was through those clients that she kind of got to know the cannabis space and she also has a personal connection with it um, for medicinal use, and so for those reasons, she wanted to start Green Goddess Insurance to serve people in the cannabis space that need insurance, and she's local, which is great. You can talk to her in person. She's super nice. It's great to support local businesses, and she's been in the insurance business for a long time. She just, this cannabis business is new for her, but insurance is uh, something she knows very well. And Cartridge Supply Company is the other one, and um, that is uh, a contact of mine, a really good friend of mine now, Nick Sai, who um, is their LA rep, and so they offer um, cartridges and, and batteries for your use. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, but he, he came through as well um, about a week later, and so, yeah, we were able to get some money that we put for food and stuff. But, yeah, they, I mean, to have two companies, you know, step up for you. And when, uh, when you have no reputation, you know, just taking a leap of faith, that means a lot. That's an investment in our community, in our local, you know, community here in Santa Barbara. Like, that, that, that is big. So we're very thankful to Green Goddess Insurance and Cartridge Supply Company. Uh, thank you, because you really have helped to start a movement here in Santa Barbara. So now I wanted to ask both of you this question. What was the most surprising thing each of you learned putting this together? Oh, that's a curveball. Oh, I like that, hmm. huh? Think See, got to thinking you about know, that, huh? <laughs> for me, I would have to say it was it was a lot of validation that these kind of events needed to happen and more frequently. I didn't know just how bad something like this was needed. I mean even well-established companies, they're not necessarily in contact or, or, or know personally the new founders of newer companies or new companies that are sprouting up all over Santa Barbara. And so if you don't know other people who are in the same industry as you, that's a problem because, you know, you're not cultivating these relationships and those are important to have in business. And it's such a cool industry. Why wouldn't you want to like network, you know? <laughs> if, if the people The people are great. And I think, you know, it's not a unique thing for the cannabis industry. And I think that's part of why uh, Kristen and I got along so well is just because we are both advocates and supporters of, of cannabis um, as an option. And uh, for me, I think it wasn't so much of a surprise. I mean, I guess it was a surprise, like that this whole thing was instigated. Really, it was something that started on Instagram with Felipe and I talking, but it never would have, turned into partnering on an event if we hadn't met in person. You just can't get to those kinds of leaps, you know, through just Instagram messaging. So for me, it was really powerful to see, you know, what meeting someone in person or meeting other people in person can do for your relationship, for business, for community. Um, and it started with us meeting, but then at the event, just seeing so many people connect. And, like, one of my favorite moments was seeing the managers of two different dispensaries 
connect and they've heard about each other and they're like, you know, slightly competing, but not like heavy duty competing. But one of the managers said to the other, because they're both in the middle of trying to go recreational. And he's like, you know what? If you need help, give me a call. Like, I would love to help you guys on this. And like seeing that, like our local community come together in that way was really neat. And those kinds of things just don't happen through emails and Instagram. Like it takes getting to know someone in person, I think, for those kinds of relationships to form. And I think that's really powerful. And to see it in person, like first with um, meeting Delta Leaf Labs and Felipe and Elijah and then see it at the event happening to other people was really cool and powerful. Yeah, that was, man. Because I know for me, I have difficulty because I'm pretty introverted beyond the podcast. Beyond the podcast, yeah, I'm just... uh, Mm -hmm. I'm pretty interested. I'm the same way. Put me behind the computer. I'm happy. <laughs> all right. So let's see. Walk me through this. So if I'm going to put on a cannabis event, all right, what are uh, the top three things I should think about? Using technology to like help you organize things. You know, things like Eventbrite and Facebook are really great way to um, just help you streamline things so that. RSVPs and communications contacts don't get lost and so that you can communicate more efficiently. Um, yeah, so using technology to, to help you with your events and making things to-do lists, I think those are really great things. Uh, but it's, surprisingly, um, Kristen still has a flip phone. Yeah, I'm going to put it on black. Oh, man, you know what? Yeah, I'm talking to you on it right now. That's a whole other show. Right that is a that whole, is a whole, whole other, other show, show, man, because that's like got interventions and like slides right. with it. Right. Um, yeah. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of slow blinking, like <sighs> a lot of sighing. But no, yeah. um, that's a yeah. See, you know what? That's even a more fantastic thing was the fact that you guys pulled it together, one of you with a flip phone. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's the only reason. That's a you know what though? It works power. really well as a phone, and I you're you're right. in other no, ways. You're absolutely um, right. All of those things. Correct. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I would, man, no, I'm afraid well, to take it away from you like cutting off Samson's hair, man. You'd be done. You'd you know, you'd you, you wouldn't be able to function. Right. I'd be like, look, just give yeah. her her phone. She does great with it. Look at the job. Yeah. Look at the job she does with the flip phone. Yeah, no, like I said, uh, good on you for uh, pulling it together <laughs> on the flip that, phone. That, man. That, that, back to what we're talking. Let's not talk about my flip phone. No, anymore. no, back like I said, that's a whole other topic so, on um, the phone. So Felipe said technology, and I would add number two to the list. I would say partnerships, partnerships, partnerships. Like leverage the contacts of partners. Um, like I know we couldn't have done this event without partnering with Delta Leaf Lab. You know, every person that you partner with has their own uh, network and can help promote. Um, and just in general, I'm a huge fan of shit, but um, I would say for an event, that would be hugely important, unless you're, like, already, you know, have all the contacts in the world. But even if you do, I mean, you're going to reach so many more people if you partner with people. You can't do it by yourself. No, no one's doing it alone. No one's doing it alone. No. Yeah. And and we asked uh, during the event, you know, at, at a certain point, we asked, you know, how they heard about this event, and, and about half the crowd said Del Police, and the other half about said uh, said the same thing about SB Verde. And so, um, imagine if we create more partnerships and more more momentum. You know, again, this is uh, something a nice little movement that we want to start. I mean, it has a lot of potential. But yeah, partnerships are key. Yeah, Chris and I definitely agree with that. Uh, so. Was that three? I don't even know. No, it wasn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was two. You have a third Technology. one. Yeah, and a third one. What do you think, Christy? You know, just promoting, um, getting the word out. I would say that was, and that was fun. That was the most fun. Which was the most fun? Promoting it? I That was the most fun to do, actually, promoting and getting to talk to people. We weren't selling anything. Yeah. <laughs> we just were inviting people to this cool, like, event, happy hour-ish. Uh, professional networking pop up. I mean, we call it so many things, uh, yeah. but ultimately it was just uh, it was just people in the industry hanging out, having a good time, connecting, meeting for the first time. But the outreach, I mean, it was well received. Clearly, because yeah. a week before the event, we, we ran out of out of out of uh, tickets, 
Uh, but I like I like the way we promoted it. It was very personal, and we were doing a lot of direct messaging to people, like mm-hmm. personally inviting people. It wasn't just posting all the time to a large number of people just trying to get anyone in the door. I mean, it was very targeted, you know, to people that we see doing awesome stuff in the community. And and those DMs take time, but they're, they're really, really worth it. I mean, the personal outreach and invitation, I really like that aspect of it. Do you guys think you'll have the next one at a brewery again? You know, we were just talking before we we connected uh, about um you know moving forward uh, we would love to have a follow up event we're actually shooting for december hopefully something that's a little christmas related uh, but something way more low key um we'll work out those details but um it should be a fun event and again just focusing on networking and and something that something kind of special that we want to do that we feel is really important um but we'll tell you more about that um later on but we would love to shoot for december a lot of people would want it to happen. that's like six weeks away what is this with december you guys? is, is like four is weeks it a test you guys testing yourselves or what um <laughs> there must know, be a timeline we like <laughs> yeah you know, like every it, six weeks man every 10 weeks <laughs> you know it this is an investment in the community it's great to have business contacts but it's even better to have relationships in this space um and so I think that we can all, you know, win and succeed, but we just have to learn how to communicate and collaborate wherever possible. And and so we, we're doing it because we want to build community and, and help introduce people and help connect people because I think it's a really great benefit to our community. If we know how to organize ourselves, how to support causes, how to support each other's businesses, um, it means that we can all go forth together, you know, in, in and that's the kind of that's the kind of space that I would want to work in, and I hope that others see the same thing for our space. Yeah. So yeah, happy you were able to make it, and we really love your show and support your show. And- no, I was I was glad to see you guys because I missed you guys at WeedCon. So mm-hmm. that's right, that's right. That's yeah, right. so I was I was like, all right, well, you know, I'm I'm, I'm showing up, so there's no way around mm-hmm. it. So are you guys gonna like put together a little event company or? Um, I don't on? think I don't think I don't think we're necessarily Maybe we, we headed in that direction. Four twenty weddings and I, right. Okay. Okay. Hey, I wasn't ready. I'm, to I'm just here to plant the seed, kidding. man. I'm just here to plant the seed. <laughs> right. You know what we do want to build is 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 a network people within this space. Um, we want to build um, you know consciousness about issues. We want to build um, communication and help facilitate that. Um, and if that uh, means that, that we're sounds like you're starting to build it, but okay, you know, a little bit, a little bit. It's it's just something else that is really needed in the community. And so I don't know if we're, we would call ourselves party planners, but definitely community organizers. Uh, no, just yeah. a, event yeah. coordinators, man. You know, just right. <laughs> come on, yeah, four twenty friendly. Some? Right. All right. So now. Please let everybody know both where to find you, Kristen, at SP Verde, and you, Felipe, at Delta Leaf Lab. How do we find you, get a hold of you, follow you? Sure. Um, Instagram is easy. We're um, SP Verde 805. And our website is spverde.com. And we had a promo code that we were giving out um, at the event. Uh, if anyone would like to add a listing to our site, you can get a fully managed listing for three months. Um, that includes unlimited pictures and nice copy and lots of other bells and whistles. But you can use the promo code BUDBREW when you add your listing on our site. I wanted to give that out for your listeners. And Felipe, they have one too that you can talk about. Yeah, and Delta Leaf, so we do genetic testing on cannabis seedlings to help growers identify their males and females. So we doubt males with uh, DNA testing. And so, uh, yeah, we have a similar promo that people can can uh, get their kits for 50% off um, if they use your code, Alex. And so our DNA collection kits are going to be 50% off. Wow. We ran that promotion for Bud Blue, but we'll add it um, to your to for your listeners as well. Um, can you remind people what your code is? It is IMGS10. Yeah, and that'll get you 10% off the first order. 
Um, but if you use that between now and the end of December, you also get any um, as many plant DNA collection kits as you need up to um, 100. That we might be literally that as well. But uh, but yeah, so we wanted to offer that. Instagram is the best place. Um, you know, Delta Leaf Labs. Um, my partner Elijah Spina and I are the ones who um, who uh, read all the messages. It's not anyone else. You're getting a message from us each time you interact with us. And you can go to our website, www.deltaleaflabs.com, and then you can get more information on how we um, collect samples for gen- genetic testing so that uh, we can identify males and females in a matter of days so that cultivators don't have to wait several weeks, you know, for their, uh, for their boys and girls to develop their, their certain body parts. <laughs> yeah, you know, I yeah. I should have had your kits before I pop these seeds. You know how we were talking about later? I used yeah. To eat. Okay, so because yeah. I, I had one of the males pop up because I had put them in a cabinet but didn't switch the lights. They were on an old timer. So I was like, oh, yeah, turn it on. Next thing I know, everything's coming up flowers except for this one little bastard in the back corner. I was like, you <laughs> son of a... Then I heard, then I just, yeah. that's when I remembered it. Like, fuck, all right, well, I got to call. Yeah. Him. Yeah, it's always nice to be able to identify them and have that peace of mind so that you're uh, not stressing. <laughs> yeah, no, well, it's just that you're yeah. not waiting. Finally, towards the end, you're looking at them like, ah, oh, she's going to be beautiful. And then you're like, ah, oh, yeah. look at the uh, Yeah. <laughs> Joke, no, Mike. Sure. Yeah, and you never, even if it's just one, you know, you don't, you don't get used to that kind of disappointment, right? No, like, no, <laughs> no. It's and, and, and you still kind of you know chop them down with a little bit of spite, like you fucker. <laughs> you know? You're right. Yeah. You're like, Fine. Yeah, we've got we've gotten that feedback. So yeah, using our service, you can identify your males and females, and all it takes is a little cutting of a leaf um, for each plant that you want to test, and you send it to us in our little kits that you order on our website, DeltaLeafLabs.com, and we'll send you results within three to five days after you send us your samples. So really great promotion that we're running right now um, with Alex and your listeners. Um, in addition to your 10% off, you'll get 50% off on your DNA collection kit, which are only a dollar, but you'll get them for, for half off. So yeah, I hope some of your listeners take advantage of that. Yeah, for sure. Everybody, uh, that's 60% off, you guys. Come on. I know some of you are cheap. Well, the holidays are coming. So holidays are coming. You got to save it up. <laughs> exactly. You got to save up, man. You got to, you know, exactly. save money. a good present. <laughs> hey, that would be a kind of a cool present. A little box of kits. Say, so here you go, honey. Ooh. Mm. See, now that's a you person. Know, that's a partner that knows you. Maybe they're exactly. trying to give you a hint. Maybe instead of, I don't know, you know, pictures of babies, they bring you a little box of testing kits. Right. Anyways, I'm off yeah. on a tangent. Um, no, <laughs> look, you guys, thank you for joining me. Thank you for getting on the phone with me. I really appreciate that. Alex, thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah, it's been, yeah. been a treat. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for having this podcast and keeping it going. Um, I'm sure I'm sure you know people. Yeah, no, it's, it's Information is never lacking in our community. And it's just a really great way to, um, to help people connect and, and stay informed. So, um, so, yeah, keep it up. Thank you for doing this. Um, well, I appreciate that. Us. Thank you very much. Well, don't go anywhere. All right? Okay. Everybody else, I'm going to take a short break, and I'll be back. Well, everyone, that's it. That's the end of the show. Again, I want to thank Kristen and Felipe for getting on the phone to talk to me. I also want to thank all of the artists who let me use their music to put the show together. Just a reminder, next episode, I have Dr. Jake Felice back, and we're going to talk about digestive issues and cannabis. I'm looking forward to that conversation. I really do like hanging out with that guy. Now, don't forget, if this show has entertained you or enlightened you or even given you a little bit of escape from your day, you can support the show financially by going to patreon.com slash inmygrow or you can go to inmygrow.com and click on the support the show tab. There's a couple of different ways to support the show financially there. You can either buy a t-shirt or you can click on the Amazon link. Real simple, real easy. If you can't help the show financially, don't worry about it. I get it. Here's how you can't help though. You can tell three other people about the show and you can subscribe to the podcast and the website. Now, if you're a cannabis company that wants to reach our worldwide audience, again, you can email me at inmygrow@gmail.com. Well, everyone, I'm going to get on out of here. 
I love you all very much. And don't forget to always grow, learn, and teach.